Tonight, several developing stories as we come on the air. The Nor'easter set to hit, bringing blinding rain and damaging winds. Major travel hubs, D.C., up through Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. We time it out. Also breaking at this hour, the FBI now investigating. After the horror in the cockpit is revealed. Tonight, what happened inside one of those new Boeing jets after it went into that nosedive? The pilots frantically trying to flip through the manual. And what happened the day before on that same jet? ABC News learns tonight New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft will not take the plea deal that would have forced him to acknowledge guilt. And tonight, the interview just coming in now, the woman, the original owner of that day spa, now at the center of the scandal, speaking out. President Trump and what he said today about the Mueller report expected soon. And late today, the president unleashing again on the late John McCain. Cindy and Meghan McCain and what they're saying tonight. The U2 mom under arrest tonight, accused of abusing her seven adopted children. Accused of not feeding them, targeting them with pepper spray to act in videos seen by millions on YouTube. Did she make millions off her adopted children? The horror on a cruise ship, the young man and the bungee that snapped. And the hidden cameras found in hotel rooms. Authorities now say the cameras were live streaming images of 1,600 hotel guests for subscribers. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening. It is great to have you with us here on a very busy Wednesday night. We have those horrific details from inside that cockpit, that new Boeing jet that went into a nosedive. We'll get to that in a moment. But first, the major nor'easter set to hit, affecting major travel hubs first thing in the morning. The new system hitting from the Carolinas up through D.C., Philadelphia, New York, and Boston. Let's get right to meteorologist Rob Marciano leading us off tonight with the timing of this. Good evening, Rob. Hi, David. This is another situation where we have two waves merging together for another high-impact storm, this time over the East Coast. Let's look at the big radar. We already have some rain across Norfolk and Hampton Roads, but that low across the Great Lakes, that kicks the energy to the Carolinas tonight for your nor'easter tomorrow. And by 7 a.m., Richmond, D.C., Baltimore, you're in it for heavy rain, a messy rush hour, increasing in rain and wind throughout the day here in the New York metro area. The evening rush is going to be awful. And then carrying over Friday morning across much of New England, the backside of this, you are going to see some accumulating snow north of I-91. But for the big cities with this inland track, it's going to be mostly rain. All these big cities will be at risk at least for some urban flooding over the next 36 hours. Rob David. Marciano leading us off tonight. Rob, thank you. And as I mentioned at the top tonight, the other breaking headline involves one of those new Boeing Max jets that crashed and the horror now revealed from inside the cockpit. For the first time, we are learning those chilling details. What happened during the first crash? Pilots scrambling to flip through the emergency checklist, the manual for that new jet, to try to figure out what was going on. And tonight we have just confirmed the FBI is now joining the investigation into these jets. ABC's David Curley with what happened in that cockpit. Tonight, word the FBI is joining that investigation into the certification of Boeing's new 737 MAX after those two crashes and chilling details about the first crash in Indonesia. There was trouble the day before on a flight, the jet moving dramatically up and down after takeoff, the pilots confused. But a third pilot sitting in the jump seat, according to Bloomberg, apparently saved the flight. There's this chaotic situation in the cockpit. The pilots are uh, trying to figure out how to solve it and are not making progress. The third guy sitting in the jump seat is the one who spoke up and said, try turning off the trim system. Boeing says its manual calls for the automation to be disengaged. The simple procedure, if you have a problem with the autopilot, is to shut it off. Yeah, take control of the aircraft. I know I can fly the airplane manually without my electric trim. In Indonesia, even though the jump seat pilot apparently saved the day and the problem was written up, the jet was put back into service the next day with a bad sensor, triggering that anti-stall system called MCAS, forcing the nose down. During the accident flight, the pilots, according to Bloomberg, while struggling with the aircraft, were going through their emergency checklist but ran out of time. Having never turned off the system, the jet crashing into the Java Sea. There are ways to cope with the failure. And what we've seen in Lion Air and potentially with Ethiopia is pilots weren't trained to cope with the problem. So let's get back to David Curley with us again tonight on this. You've been on this from the beginning. And David, a new layer to this tonight. The Pentagon's inspector general is now investigating acting Defense Secretary Patrick Shanahan and his ties to Boeing. 
And whether or not Boeing got any preferential treatment, David, in contracts at the Pentagon. Now, as far as these crashes, Boeing says it will cooperate with the investigations, all investigations, including Senate hearings, which are set for next week. David? David Curley with us tonight. Thank you, David. And next this evening to the investigation involving a mother now under arrest tonight. She had seven adopted children. They were in a popular YouTube series. And tonight, prosecutors have charged that mom with abusing the children. Police say they were pepper sprayed, locked in a closet for days without food. Here's ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, tonight. Their video antics were viewed a quarter of a billion times. But tonight, police say the serial abuse those little actors suffered was a dark, behind-the-camera secret. Michelle Hobson had adopted the seven children ages 3 to 15, but according to court documents, she'd beaten and pepper sprayed them when they failed to memorize their lines. Her Fantastic Adventures YouTube channel had over 800,000 subscribers. The on-camera scenarios chillingly similar to what police say was their reality. See? We're trapped! Investigators tipped off after Hobson's adult biological daughter came forward. Her adoptive children claiming they did not go to school and that Hobson would pepper spray all over their face and body, spanking them, forcing them to take ice baths, and when resisting, would force their heads underwater. The children allegedly beaten with hangers and forced to stand in a corner, hands raised above their head for 18 hours straight. And while some of the videos focused on food, even cookies... <laughs> Police say the kids were starved for days at a time. Police also accuse Hobson's two biological adult male sons of failing to report the abuse despite knowing about it. Hobson now facing multiple charges, including kidnapping. She has not entered a plea. Matt Guppin with us live tonight. And Matt, if convicted of the most serious charges here, this accused mom could spend the rest of her life behind bars? And that's because she faces 19 counts, David, including five for kidnapping. Now, she has possibly made millions off of this YouTube channel, but just minutes ago, YouTube terminated that channel, ensuring she can't monetize it going forward. David. All right, Matt Gutman on a horrific case tonight. Matt, thank you. Also developing at this hour, the new headline involving New England's Patriots owner, Robert Kraft, tonight. His lawyer now saying Kraft will not take the plea deal after that prostitution bust in Florida. The deal would have forced Kraft to acknowledge guilt. And tonight, the interview just in. The founding and former owner of that day spa, now at the center of this scandal, is speaking out. Here's ABC's Tara Palmieri. She's the woman smiling beside President Trump and his family at glitzy fundraisers and Mar-a-Lago events. She's also the founder and former owner of a Florida massage parlor, recently busted as an alleged front for sex trafficking, a sting that led to the arrest of the president's good friend, Patriots owner Robert Kraft. Cindy Yang sold the spa six years ago, but since the raid, her Trump connection now under the microscope. Congressional Democrats calling for an FBI counterintelligence investigation into whether Yang sold access to the Trumps to Chinese business people. Sitting down with me today, she denied it all, saying she's just a fan of the president. I believe he's the best business person. I'm the small business person, too. I would believe that we will make the American great again. That reason, I become the, the, the Republican. Federal records show Yang and her family have contributed over $50,000 to pro-Trump and pro-Republican organizations since 2017. On Super Bowl Sunday, she was at the golf club having her picture taken with the president. That day, uh, I think more than 100 people take a picture of each day. Only my picture got a trouble. The Super Bowl event, you got some Super of your Super Bowl clients. only by myself. Oh, you didn't take any clients? No, either. because I didn't, didn't, just myself. The Patriots won the Super Bowl. The owner, Robert Kraft, now facing charges stemming from the raid on that spa Yang once owned. Prosecutors offered him a plea bargain. But tonight, we have learned Kraft has turned it down. Like For her part, Yang says she knows nothing about alleged illicit activity. So David, Democrats are questioning whether Cindy Yang is a counterintelligence threat, but she vehemently denies that she's a spy. She's scared and she thinks she's being targeted because she's Chinese and Republican and supports President Trump. David? Tara Palmieri with the interview tonight. Tara, thank you. Next tonight, President Trump lashing out at the highly anticipated Mueller report today. The president calling the report, quote, ridiculous, but he also said, let the public see it. And late today, the president unleashing a new attack on the late Senator John McCain, who passed away nearly seven months ago now. His wife, Cindy McCain, just today on the hate she's now receiving 
and Meghan McCain reacting too. Here's our chief White House correspondent, Jonathan Carl. Standing before a line of tanks at a factory in Lima, Ohio, President Trump launched an all-out assault on late senator and war hero John McCain. So I have to be honest, I've never liked them much. Hasn't been for me. I've really probably never will. The pro-military crowd silent as Trump told them he never got a thank you for authorizing the use of an Air Force jet to transfer McCain's casket along with other military support for his memorial service. I gave him the kind of funeral that he wanted, which as president I had to approve. I don't care about this. I didn't get thank you. That's okay. We sent him on the way, but I wasn't a fan of John McCain. So now what we could say is now we're all set. I don't think I have to answer that question, but the press keeps, what do you think of McCain? What do you think? Not my kind of guy, but some people like him, and I think that's great. The president started his renewed attacks on McCain over the weekend, and today McCain's widow, Cindy, revealed one of the hateful messages she's received in recent days. On The View today, McCain's daughter, Megan, called the president's attacks a bizarre new low. If I had told my dad, seven months after you're dead, you're going to be dominating the news and all over Twitter, he would think it was hilarious <laughs> that our president was so jealous of him mm -hmm. that he was dominating jealous. the news cycle in death as well. Most Republican senators have resisted directly criticizing the president for his attacks on McCain. But today, Georgia Republican Johnny Isaacson, who chairs the Veterans Affairs Committee, said enough is enough. It's deplorable what he said. We should never reduce the service that people give to this country. John Carr with us live from the White House. And John, this all comes as Washington, of course, waits for special counsel Bob Mueller to hand in his report. America waiting, in fact. And look at this. Today, our cameras, you saw this, John, catching a rare glimpse of Mueller as he arrived at work. And John, you asked the president if he wants Mueller's report to be made public. Here's what the president said. Mr. President, does the American public have a right to see the Mueller report? I don't mind. I mean, frankly, I told the House, if you want, let him see it. Let it come out. Let people see it. Let it come out, he says. It made immediate news today, John. And President Trump now saying he's looking forward to reading the report himself. Uh, he did just a week ago. He said that, the, that there should not be a Mueller report. But today he said that he wants to read it. And so do tens of millions of his supporters. David? John Carl with us again tonight. John, thank you. We're going to turn tonight to the newly released body cam video of a police takedown in Las Vegas. Officers confronting the suspect. They say the video shows the moment he went for his gun. And we warn you tonight, the video is disturbing. Here's ABC's Gio Benitez. Let me see our hands! Las Vegas police responding to a call about an armed robbery. Police say the suspect, 20-year-old Stephen Aguirre, had just broken into a boys and girls club spotted here on surveillance video. Police now move in, quickly confronting him, then ordering him to the ground. Turn around. Turn around. Keep your hands up. Get on your knees. Seconds later, the suspect drops his arms as police open fire. The officer saw a firearm and told Aguirre specifically to not touch it. As Aguirre was on the ground, he attempted to stand up and began pulling his firearm out of the holster. That suspect survived and is in stable condition tonight. And David Aguirre is charged with armed robbery, burglary, and resisting arrest. Police now believe that gun belonged to his grandfather, a retired police officer. David? Gio, thank you. We turn overseas tonight into the around-the-clock search and rescue operations in Mozambique. Choppers are airlifting survivors of that deadly cyclone, some climbing trees to escape the flooding. More than 1,000 people are feared dead, and the U.S. and European Union tonight are sending emergency aid. Now to Syria tonight, President Trump proclaiming ISIS will be gone from that country by tonight. The president standing in front of the White House today holding a map showing the success of U.S.-backed forces over the last two years. Military officials have given no indication on when the battle over the last remaining ISIS foothold in that country will end. Back here at home tonight into new fallout now in the nationwide college admissions cheating scandal. Scrutiny growing on several major campuses, students on those campuses right now, dozens of them, with their college careers hanging in the balance. At UCLA, a student recruited for the elite women's soccer team despite allegedly having no soccer experience. Here's ABC's Kana Whitworth. Toward the back post. They are among the best in college soccer, the women of UCLA, making it to the championship in 2017. But one player not spotted in the team photo that season, number 41, midfielder and freshman Lauren Isaacson. 
A year and a half later, her parents stand accused of bribing her way into UCLA and onto the team, even though she reportedly didn't play soccer. College counselor Rick Singer allegedly took $600,000 from the Isaacsons to get their daughter into USC and UCLA, creating fake sports credentials and test scores. She was touted as a former MVP and team captain of a soccer club. But tonight, the coaching director of that club says they didn't even have a team for her age group. I would say team captain and MVP would be hard to be that of a team that doesn't exist. Tonight, a UCLA soccer coach has been indicted on racketeering charges and placed on leave. Isaacson, no longer on the team, but is still at the school. And David, here at USC, they have just named a new president, while at the same time placing holds on the accounts of a growing number of students who may be involved in this admissions scandal. And David, that means they can't register for classes. Kena Whitworth on this story again tonight. Kena, thank you. And there was news tonight about your money and the American economy. The Federal Reserve today holding the line on interest rates, saying they will likely not change at all this year. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell saying the U.S. economy is slowing but remains, quote, in a good place. Accident at sea, a young man on a cruise from Miami to the Bahamas was using a new bungee trampoline when the cord snaps. Here's ABC's Victor Akendo. One minute, Casey Holiday is flipping high above Royal Caribbean's Mariner of the Seas. The next, he's plummeting 20 feet. Bungee cords on the popular Skypad trampoline attraction apparently snapping one, then the other. All of a sudden, I'm on the, on the ground. Not sure if I can walk ever again. Just step back, step back. The cruise cut short. Holiday seen here on a stretcher before being taken to the hospital. My shoulder got dislocated, uh, bruised a couple ribs, and then my pubis inside of my pelvis shattered. One month later, Holiday still struggling to get around. Now filing suit, claiming the cruise line failed to inspect and maintain the ropes, as similar companies who operate these types of activities do on land. My concern is that these attractions are not being inspected and certified. David, in a statement, Royal Caribbean says they do not comment on pending litigation, adding that they operate their ships safely, professionally, and responsibly. David? Victor Akendo tonight. Thank you, Victor. When we come back here... To the index of other news into the remarkable moment, three children were saved after being dropped from a burning building in Des Moines. Police body camera footage showing officers on the scene convincing a mother to drop a baby and two toddlers from the third floor. Firefighters then saved the mom with a ladder. Incredible work. Overseas tonight, that headline making news and alarming travelers everywhere. Two people under arrest accused of secretly live streaming 1,600 hotel guests. Authorities in Seoul, South Korea, discovering spy cameras hidden inside furniture in 30 hotels across that country. They say more than 4,000 viewers from around the world had paid for access to those feeds. More than half a billion dollars on the line tonight here in the U.S. The $550 million Powerball jackpot, that's $335 million for the lump sum, the eighth largest in the game. And while you fill out that March Madness bracket, you might want to buy a Powerball ticket, too, because the chances of actually winning the jackpot are apparently better than filling out that perfect bracket. Good luck. Also, tonight's your chance for a rare supermoon that will hit its full phase at 9.43 Eastern, coinciding with the uh, spring equinox that just happened for the first time in 19 years. Supermoons in March, by the way, are called the worm moon because the ground is thawing. Spring couldn't get here soon enough. When we... Finally tonight, America strong. President George H.W. Bush had just one wish for his dog, Sully. And Sully is no doubt making the president proud. It was that poignant image of President George H.W. Bush's service dog, Sully, laying before his casket with the president's family at the end, brought into the Capitol Rotunda. It was President Bush's wish that Sully would go on to serve those in need. Just last month, Sully joining the team at Walter Reed, bringing hope to veterans and their children getting care too. And just tonight, these new images with the little warriors at the pediatric chemo center in the Murtha Cancer Center. And someone is helping Sully post on Instagram. I loved meeting Camden today. His doctor even letting him stop his IV meds so he could join me on the floor for a snuggle. Sully and those smiles. I hope to see you tomorrow. Good night.